Hello, my absolutely beautiful Cancerian friends, and welcome to your horoscope for October of 2022. And I want to tell you right at the beginning of the video, Cancers, we are going to spend a little bit of extra time in this video. It may be longer than 10 minutes, so buckle in with me, but just know ahead of the game that if you're watching me on video, cool, or if you need to just listen to me audio-wise, we're going to go a little bit. There's a lot to unpack in this month. Not only are we in the eclipse season, but we've got planets going into retrograde planets coming out of retrograde. So there is a lot to dig into as we look through the dates of what's happening for you this month, Cancers, okay? All right, beautiful friends, let's jump in here and talk about what's going on. Now, first thing I would like to call to your attention to keep in mind as we're traveling this month, Mars is slowed down in preparing for the retrograde. Although it's not going to happen, until the end of the month, Mars is slowed down. So even a slowed down version of Mars is pretty noticeable. So one thing I want you to keep in mind is that as we're coming into this month, you may already be feeling, in addition to the eclipse and the moon intensity, which is definitely stirring some things up, which is great because it's a great place for change, right? But you may also be feeling this energy like you want to move forward, you want to push something forward, and you can't. And when you try to do that, you feel more frustrated. You feel more tried. You feel like people are out to get you a little bit more. So I want to tell you going into this month to keep in mind that from really September, but certainly the beginning of October, really until we get through beginning of February, chill out with needing to push. That is not the best use of a slow down Mars energy. Instead, relook at how you're doing things, why you're doing things. Do you genuinely have the desire to be doing what you're doing? Where do you need to slow down? For you, the Mars retrograde is going to happen in the 12th house space. So I have a couple thoughts on that, <clears throat> and we'll get to it as we get to the end of the video. But I just want to call to your attention immediately this month that it is not a stop, hide under a rock kind of energy, but also our planet of fire, of drive, of get up and go has lost a little get up and went, you know what I mean? So be mindful, okay? All right, right at the beginning of the month, on the second, we've got Mercury coming out of retrograde at that 24 degrees of Virgo. Now, this is fantastic because Mercury being our planet of the mind, how we think, how we communicate, um, decisions that we're making, First of all, coming direct is really nice because it means communication can kind of get on with moving forward. But I do want you to keep in mind that Mercury is coming out of retrograde at that 24 degrees of Virgo, which means until October 16th, you can definitely make decisions, sign those contracts, do all the things that you need to do, but they're likely going to be decisions or contracts that you're signing or making based on old things that you worked on during the retrograde path. One great place you can go is back to August 20th. What was going on for you when um, Mercury entered into its pre-retrograde shadow time at 24 degrees of Virgo? What was happening in your life? What were you getting organized about? Mercury in Virgo is comfortable, so it's in domicile. So this has been lighting up your third house space cancer. So this is about speaking, it's about decision making, it's about studying, it's about writing, communication in all forms, maybe something going on with your siblings. This is a great thing to be considering as well. Websites, if you're looking at it from that direction, you know, maybe you're learning something, you had to go back to be learning something and now you have to get reorganized or you have to accept the role as the student, not the teacher this time. So I want you to think about what are you getting reorganized organized and what are you ready to make your decisions on. Now Mercury will slide back into the energy of Libra on the 10th and then it will leave its post retrograde shadow time which means we're good to go full moving forward on October um, 16th okay. So really kind of a nice deal and then we'll actually see Mercury move completely out of Libra and into Scorpio before we end this month as well. So there is forward motion forward decision making available. When we get to the 8th, we're going to see Pluto come out of retrograde in the energy of Capricorn at 26 degrees. So double check that on your chart. Pluto, in its path moving forward and in its retrograde moving backward, it's not whipping and zipping. Okay, so it's slow moving. So it went retrograde uh, April 29th. 
at 28 degrees of Capricorn, and then it just slid back to 26 degrees of, of Capricorn. But this is a really powerful energy. So even when it, when Pluto is moving, although it's one of our really like our furthest outer planet. I think it's really impactful for us and we need to be grateful that it moves so slow because it brings such profound change. It really goes back into our lives and for you, this has been in your relationship zone. It has gone back into your life and said, hey, this relationship is not healthy anymore. It needs to die off, right? Like it needs to be deconstructed and rise as a phoenix in a different way, or it needs to die off and be done, right? There is no empowerment. There's no transformation available in this relationship. But also during the retrograde time, it puts you in a position in your relationships. And I want you to think of relationships as the relationship with maybe a romantic partner or somebody that you engage with, but conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships, okay? Contracts commitments that you've made and for some of you being in the energy of capricorn cancer you could be looking at contracts around work i definitely think that that's a possibility but also cancer the relationship of you with you right you being your authority you, this is a really important relationship what is your relationship with the universe and the divine flow do you feel like you're in it so whatever it is over this last handful of months, something in that relationship and relationships you have chosen to have in your life have died off in order to lead to transformation and empowerment and freedom for you on this side. So as Pluto is direct and we see this energy continuing to push forward, I'll be interested to hear from you. What has changed in the structure of your relationships? What crumbled and what is ready to live there now? On the 9th, we've got a full moon happening at 16 degrees of Aries. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or we need to create an adjustment here, right? All the lights in the sky are on. You can see it for what it is what it is, what it ain't. <laughs> and so we're asked to take a look and make an adjustment here. Now, this particular, the ruling planet of this particular moon in Aries, remember, Mars is slowed down. So it is also a signal for us here in the Aries energy, in your career zone, that you're slowed down a little bit. And when I say career here, I want to be quite broad. Yes, this could be your career that you've been doing for a long time, okay? Or it can be a career that you are working. I'm not talking about a job, I'm talking about a career. But it's also the title that you hold in public, right? Are you mom? Are you dad? Are you wife? Are you husband? Are you community service rep? Are you grandma, right? Like what's the title that we call you in public and the public would know you by this name and by the public that can just mean your grandkids okay it, and it could also be that you're a politician so i want you to think quite broadly about where are these changes where you're being slowed down to need to relook at your title that you've got going in the world now in the energy of aries one of the things to think about here is um you know it's illuminating a me and a we axis for you. So Aries here, Libra here, okay? 10th house over here, 4th house over here. So something could be lit, lit it up, oh my gosh, could be lit up for you in your 4th house zone of Libra where is there a partnership situation happening in your life at home, okay? You know, is somebody moving into your house? Is somebody moving out of your house? And on the other side, you're feeling opposed to this a little bit, Cancer, because you're like, yeah, but I want... I wish to do this thing. And so you're not quite bridging that gap between the me and the we um, just yet. So this is a great call here in your 10th house zone, considering and looking at what's in the fourth house zone, where you do wanna be or where you're being put in a position to be independent, own yourself, own your warrior, own your title, in your own way and you'll bridge that gap with the we because when i can accept who i am and what my role is it allows me the freedom to step towards filling the job description there right now other things to think about is that mars who's also already slowed down we talked about that is in conversation at this particular moon with neptune so there is some sentiment to me where it's like if you're 
moving something forward or you're trying to start something or you're trying to go in a different direction with your career that you might be feeling like you're tiptoeing into it a little bit, right? Or if it's a process of you're leaving a career or you're transitioning out of a career, it's like you're tiptoeing backwards because that Mars Neptune is like, I don't know, I mean, we're doing it, but maybe not all of this, right? Maybe not everything fits the description of what I'm going to be doing next. So if you feel like at this moon and over the next four weeks you are tiptoeing a little bit, I just want you to know baby steps count as full credit, okay? <laughs> All right, when we get to the 10th, we see Mercury sliding back into that Libra energy. Now this is back into that fourth house zone. We've also got the sun over here. So lots, lots, lots going on. Venus over here as well. So in your fourth house zone, home, family, real estate, property. Now you're ready to make some decisions on information that has probably come to you before or will arrive at your doorstep and you need to make some decisions on what you're going to do with that. Now some of the things that you can look at are you know, really, truly, what decisions do I need to make in my home? Am I going to live here? Is it time for me to move? Time to sign another contract? Is someone moving into your home, coming out of your home? Do you get news that someone's having a baby? You're having a baby. There's a baby. There's a work from home baby opportunity that becomes yours. These could be things that are definitely showing up at this time. Now, Venus <clears throat> and Libra in general, ruled by Venus, are attracting energies. So truly, I do think that even if it was a time for you where you're like, I just want to redecorate my house, <laughs> or I'm redecorating my internal psychological foundation so that I have balance, these are all things that Libra could absolutely be bringing to the table. And Venus is Venus, man. Venus is Venus. You could have a relationship moving into your life where you're like, I am deciding to partner here. I'm deciding to make some kind of commitment here. Now to support all of the commitment that you may be making as we get to um, the 23rd, it's a very busy day. First of all, we see Saturn coming out of retrograde in the energy of Aquarius. So okay, follow me. We're going to back up for just a minute. What was going on for you at 25 degrees of Aquarius, June 4th of 2022? what was happening in your life, what what was coming to your table, where it felt very Saturnian, right? Either you had done the work and now you're leveling up and Saturn really rewarded that and now you're at a new place. And so you had the retrograde to go back over maybe a commitment that you made. This is in your eighth house, Scorpio. So very specifically, as Saturn is coming out of retrograde at 18 degrees of Aquarius, the eighth house is about intimacy. You see into me, sex, healing, wounding, therapy, all of those things, joint connection with a partner, was something going on with a partner at that particular time, death, debt, taxes, these kinds of things show up in this eighth house arena. And if, if it's an area for you that still needed development, Saturn could have felt very heavy, like something was really pushing down on you or like you couldn't get to um, what you wanted to get to. A foundation maybe could have felt like it was crumbling and instead of feeling like that foundation's crumbling, I'm ready to move to what's next, it could have felt like doubt to you. Now, like I said, on the other side, it could have been like, I did the work, this is my rise. Now, in the eighth house, I really look at the eighth house in terms of commitments, right? I'm willing to take on this commitment commitment till death do we part, whether that is an Instagram collaboration or a marriage. Now, Pluto has also come out of retrograde in the energy of Capricorn, right? In your relationship house. So I'm kind of drawn to this thought of what's going on in the relationship zone. And again, I'm not just talking about romance. I'm talking about commitments. You know, with yourself, Cancer, are there commitments that you made to yourself that you are living up to them and you were like, gosh, if I had seen me six months ago, I would be I would be so happy with the progress we made. Or are there commitments that you made to yourself that you feel like you've fallen down on and now this is a time of like re- commitment for you. So whatever that is, Saturn is ready to move forward now. So it also means that in the outside world, business, 
government, anything attached to the government or business is going to start moving forward a little bit differently than it did before. So you might have also found yourself back at a place that you worked, back at a commitment you had, and now you're seeing how it's moving forward, okay? Now, we've also got Venus entering into the energy of Scorpio and the Sun entering into the energy of Scorpio. So happy birthday to Scorpios. Happy birthday to your fifth house. This is your annual travel through your fifth house every year, every year at this time. This is what you do. So look back over your last, just, just do two, three, ten if you're into it years. What happens for you every October? Because every year you come back to this fifth house light up. It's a time for cancers to remember that joy and pleasure and play, taking a risk is really important for you at this time. It could be a time of conversation around children or things happening for your children, right? Do you wanna have a baby? Are you wanting to adopt? Are your children going to college? You as a child to somebody, is there a connection that's lighting up for you there? I also like the fifth house for the element of taking a risk. Now, taking a risk can be you make an investment. You, um, you decide to put your voice out there. You decide to start a business or you step out on a hobby. But also, you take a risk, and it's a joyful risk usually of falling in love, of bringing a romance into your life. Venus and Scorpio, yes, you may be bringing a, a romance in, and it may be a romance that is, it can almost feel karmic in some way, or you feel deeply attached to it. Whatever comes to you at this time, it is scorpionic in the sense that it's about deep connection to yourself in this season. There's, it, it's passion, right? There's you know, if you've been trying something a certain way for a long time, Cancer, and it's not working out, stop beating that horse to death and realize deep transformation is needed. And maybe you've got to join forces, collaborate with somebody, take a risk to not have all of the answers and let somebody lead you someplace else. Now, the one other connection that I was really thinking about with Mercury getting ready to come to Scorpio is that this may be the time, maybe it doesn't happen right here on the 23rd, maybe we get closer to the end of the month or moving into November, but Cancers, if you have been hurting or you've been struggling or you've been questioning something, this may be the time where you're getting ready to say it out loud to someone who then provides a really deep resource for you to help you remove the struggle. So think about how this applies and manifests in your life. On the 25th, now we are going to eclipse this area, okay? Now this is a new moon solar eclipse. And really, you can think back in your life to about October 2014. Um, what was happening in this area of your life, in your fifth house zone? What was going on for you, right? So see, because we've got some themes going here. Now, we've also spent, you know, a lot of this year in the Scorpio-Taurus axis, which is this fifth house for you, right? It's this fifth house on the one side that you've got all of this Scorpionic energy and the 11th house on the other, social things, travel, your long range plans, goals, designs, your tribe, all of these things have been in a lit up state for you. But now as we're having this eclipse, it's going to be at two degrees of Scorpio. Now this is still the new moon for the month, so plant your seeds of intention. At this point, okay, we had some Scorpio interaction. We had a lunar eclipse in May, right? What, what have you seen that was ended and acknowledged and adjusted and it changed for you in the fifth house area? And now you're starting something new. Is it a new romance that you're ready to deeply commit to and call to the surface? Is it an old romance that is still in your mind? Or is it an old calling to a relationship in your life? Is there something around children or being a child or caring for your inner child that is popping up for you? You know, again, the fifth house is conception. Right? Whether you said your whole life, I don't want to have children, I never want to own my own business, I, any of these things, whatever you've been saying, it's almost like you maybe have the opportunity to review that at this time and see the flaws in your thinking. Whatever it is at this point, over the next three to six months, you'll see that this area has a fundamental rearrangement, I think, for you. 
Okay, almost there. The 28th of the month, we're going to see Jupiter slide back into the energy of Pisces. You've done a lot of traveling with this Pisces energy um, in your ninth house space. Neptune also traveling over here. So your ninth house, publishing, marketing, bra broadcasting, learning, teaching, training, foreign travel, legal things, um, different languages, maybe being surrounded by a different culture in some way or different languages. All of these things have likely had a really big expansion in your life in some way or brought wisdom and experience to your table. Now, whether you thought it was great, <laughs> that is that is to be seen, right? But ultimately, too, in this area of your life, of this expandedness, there's this sense of compassion, of service, of I'm, I'm resetting my ideals in this particular area. And more importantly than any of it is faith. Whatever your faith, your spiritual life has looked like, I think, Cancer, you've been tested a little bit. I really do. And hopefully this Jupiterian energy has been able to bring you to experiences that have reshaped that and allowed more freedom for you. All right. As we get, uh, where are we at? We're on the 29th here. We've got Mercury moving into the energy of Scorpio. Again, it's this energy where I do think if you've needed to say something or make a decision about something, especially in this fifth house zone, or you may even honestly get news. You know what I mean? Like your, um, your, your business starts to take off that you started. You have this conception. Somebody's having a baby. It's significant in your life. Um, you know, you hear from a romantic partner or you reach out to a romantic partner in some way. But the other thing I want to tell you about the Mercury and Scorpio season, which lasts to November 17th, is that Mercury is crazy focused in this particular um, placement. So during this transit, if depending on what's going on for you, you know, if you're feeling light, you're feeling ready to roll, you're feeling at ease with your spirit in the universe, it can be focused and you can drive in and you can just really get some things done and it will feel easier. On the other hand, what it can also do is dig. This is Scorpio energy right? And it's not bad. We need it. So it's going to dig up those feelings, all the feels. This is a deep water energy and you're the mind and the heart are getting together. The mind, the heart and the, and all of it gets together and there could be a story and you're digging. You're going back to those feelings, that unrequited love, that thing from the past. Remember when they said that and it hurt your feelings, um, right? It's going to dig. So the things that have been buried, which I also think in Scorpio, you dig up your gems and your treasures and and your minerals that you forgot were down there as well. Something that you're so damn good at that it's almost scary, right? So there is a digging feature, but you get laser focused in what it is and how to work with it. Now, what I can tell you is don't work on it alone. Don't work on it alone. Have courage in the fifth house. Take a risk. Ask for help if and when you need it or when you think it's going to be beneficial. Let's close out this month here on the 30th with Mars stepping into its retrograde. Now we're officially going to work this energy from September all the way until March of 2023. So I want you to have the big cycle in mind. But as we get here on the 30th, Mars takes this retrograde in the energy in the energy of Gemini at 25 degrees. Okay. So this lights up your 12th house space, the place of rest, respite, um, restoration, rejuvenation, spirituality. It's also the house of our own undoing where you can um, sabotage yourself in some way. Creative talents like music come here. I also, I also think of... Um, sickness or illness or conditions that don't seem like they're a thing. One of the primary things that I think of are depression, um, addiction in some form or fashion where it doesn't always, it doesn't look like you broke your arm. We can see you broke your arm, right? It's like you could easily think you don't have it and it's disguising itself as something else. And so you've been telling yourself it's something that it's not, right? And this is the same with creative things. You've been telling yourself, I can't do it. And really, you can, right? So during this Mars retrograde time, first of all, the action, the energy, the umph is just not there. But it is not a stop, 
collaborate and listen kind of energy. You don't go get under a rock. Instead, you redo your energy. You re-look at in this 12th house space, what's getting you out of bed in the morning? Where are you connected? Is resentment getting you out of bed in the morning? Because that's fuel and fire that is going to burn you out, right? Or is there a natural flow of prana, of breath that is moving you? Do you feel like your spirit and your journey are clear, complete? You know, is there cleanup that you need to do? Is there just rest that you need to take? Also, <clears throat> this is Gemini energy. Who is in your network that is helping you to rest, to rejuvenate, to spiritually awaken, to play in the spiritual world, to assimilate everything that you've experienced in your journey this far? Who is in your network that is helping you to do that? What are you learning about rest and the 12th house space? One other thought <clears throat> that I had because it's such a redo of energy and you guys as clients thank you so much you've taught me a ton about the 12th house in a way that i wouldn't normally think to use for it so for some of you <clears throat> what this can look like is you are a soldier a researcher an investigator in some way fantastic gemini placements by the way and Mars in your 12th house is taking you back to that cold case file. It's taking you back to research information you needed to gather. It's taking you back into an area where maybe you don't speak the same language as where you come from, but you're going back there and you're doing some work. You could be going back as a restoration or a peace bringing. There's some sense of bringing peace tied with information that you're traveling back into. So please, uh, well, it's so funny. I can't even ask you that. I was going to say, please, if that's you, let me know down below. But you would not do that, right? Because the 12th house is also our hidden soldiers, right? They're not the ones that we see at the grocery store because they're on lunch break. It's the ones that are, are swooping in in the night, right? So just know I understand and thank you very much for teaching me about that. <laughs> All right, my beautiful friends. We have covered a lot this month. We didn't even get into the last portion of the Uranus Saturn Square. There will be a separate video on that, but we are under that last aspect as well. This is a lot to digest. Breathe it in. Re-listen. Please let me know how your month is going.